In this video we're going to compare the total volume of a stockpile using 10 ground control points versus the total volume without ground control points. We will also analyse in detail the effectiveness of GCPs in other areas of drone mapping. At the most basic level, ground control points are always required as they introduce the element of accuracy into a survey. However, the debate still continues on whether ground control points are a necessary requirement for stockpiles or general aerial surveys of small to medium size, particularly in the mining and resource industry. Debates concerning stockpile volume calculations exist due to not just economic and safety reasons, but are also a factor in the total amount of area being surveyed. For example, for an area of less than one kilometre, then it is sometimes generally agreed upon that the need for ground control is not required. Therefore, do the costs outweigh the benefits in the area being surveyed, and can it be more economical to survey the area using only an RTK drone if possible? First, we will compare the volumes of two typical stockpiles, one with 10 ground control points and one without. We will also add more clarity on the GCP debate as it relates to stockpiles. In the first example, we installed 10 ground control points and lined each up to its correct marker. Then, using an arbitrary or closely fit polygon, we find the total volume to be 47,413.8 meters cubed. For the next example, we will ensure all other factors being equal. We do this by renaming the file and removing everything after the installation of ground control. And so we will create the dense cloud and digital elevation model again, but this time with no ground control points. As you can see, the new dense cloud has roughly the same amount of points created. For the volume boundary calculation, we will use the same shape file. And this time we can see that the total volume is 47,343.6 meter cubed. This means that without ground control points, the total volume is 70.3 meters cubed less. As a percentage, that equals a 0.14% difference. Firstly, there are other factors to consider with this type of project. They include whether or not the RTK was being used, the time of day due to moisture content, what altitude you are flying at, what processing software you are using, whether or not the base plane is different and taken into account, whether or not you are using a GNSS or total station as opposed to a UAV survey. Having taken all of the factors affecting into account, it is not still uncommon for the total stockpile volumes to be all within around 5% of one another. As ground control points provide good elevation accuracy, usually the largest differences in volume occur when the horizontal area is extended. But due to the fact that typical stockpiles do not extend to massive areas, it can be concluded that in general, ground control points in stockpile volume calculations are generally not required. When is the best time to use ground control points? In the most basic terms, ground control points are mainly useful on projects that require high precision and high absolute accuracy. Such projects include land title surveys, construction mine site inspections, new proposed road planning, as-built surveys, 
environmental documentation and overlaying georeference site plans. As a general rule, ground control points are not required for projects that only require high relative accuracy. Such projects include measuring lengths, areas and volumes, general construction site management, crop and farm scouting, and other marketing material. So without ground control points, a drone map will still achieve high relative accuracy. High relative accuracy is described as a measure of positional consistency between a data point and near data points. Relative accuracy compares the scaled distance of objects on a map with the same measured distance on the ground. And with ground control points, a drone map project will achieve high absolute accuracy. High absolute accuracy is described as the degree to which the position of an object on a map conforms to its correct location on the Earth according to an accepted coordinate system. What ratio of ground control points do we need per area? In general, with all things being equal, most experts recommend placing a minimum of five ground control points for an average sized project. More accuracy is however achieved with at least 10 points and increasing up to 20 points. However, other experiments have shown that placing too many points has been shown to introduce diminishing returns. And according to the American Society for Photogrammetry and Remote Sensing, the recommended placement is around 20 checkpoints to achieve 95% accuracy of a site with two ground control points per one checkpoint. The ASPRS also recommends one ground control point per 60 images. Other distance ground control point ratios recommend 10 ground control points per 10 acre project. How does RTK play a role? With the introduction of RTK and PPK, the need for ground control dramatically decreases. This is due to the fact that RTK collects real-time satellite data while connected to a base station to give absolute positioning. The debate still continues on whether RTK completely eliminates the need for manual ground control points altogether. RTK also has the advantage of knowing the precise location of your UAV if there is ever a presence of high winds. One main advantage of not having to place ground control points is the safety aspect and also the time saving. The negatives of RTK include the need to provide an immediate and constant real-time connection and the fact that RTK can be very expensive. PPK or post-processing kinematic can eliminate the need for ground control placement and also has the advantage of not having to provide a real-time connection. PPK can also eliminate the need for a base station setup if there is calibration services running in the area. The disadvantage of PPK is that it requires post-processing operations and can also be more expensive. Where do ground control placement sit in the future of drone mapping? With the increase in technology making RTK and PPK drones now cheaper than ever, it is predicted by some that the use of this technology will soon become industry standard. And as we are constantly moving towards a more automized world, the increased need for dangerous and time consuming manual tasks is becoming less and less. And so it would appear that the placement of ground control points in the future will eventually be phased out, especially as we now can increasingly map out larger areas from much longer distances.